that it is the provide of municipal councils to ensure that public participation is heightened. We believe in the system of ward committees. We believe more critically that the agenda that sits within municipalities, within ward councils, needs to be emphasized in the sense that municipalities need to be able to provide these ward committees with the correct information. They need to be able to make sure that public participation is actually genuine and actually is responded to. Despite what we're seeing is that broadly we're not seeing that actually this, this participation has been acknowledged at municipalities. We're not seeing clearly that there's an acknowledgement of the input of uh, ward committees in terms of the IDB process. And we really believe as a democratic alliance that government needs to be held accountable, that public participation needs to be given the correct agenda, that we need to make sure that people can come into uh, the, the corridors of municipalities and be able to give input at every level, starting from mayoral committee meetings, from tender processes. We have to make sure that government is transparent in order that our people can respond to it. Thank you very much. The Commissioner Van Beek, the ACDP is being. Good evening to everybody. We uh, are the ACDP's view. Um, is the following that we believe that we should recognize people. Secondly, we believe that we cannot undermine people that has voted us in power. We need to make sure that we acknowledge what they've done and they trust us. Therefore, public participation in our view, and that, that has been advocated by the ACDP as well, that you cannot run a government without having the people involved. And when I talk about people involved, and you talk about public participation, you will look at three things. The one is people need to participate in something. Part of public participation should not be taken for granted that you have public that only comes when you rubber stamp them. The third thing is that the public need to be acknowledged. And when you, when you go to the public, and, 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 and you talk about issues, again I will say that the public must be involved and they must be given feedback on the things that you have consulted them uh, about. And this is the ACDP viewpoint. Thank you very much. Advocate Albert from the Freedom Plants. Thank you. The Freedom Front believes that we must actually deepen democracy. The system as it is is not perfect. Now, we think we can go even further than this. We need to actually go back to the system of smaller cities, smaller wards, that's manageable. Uh, the taxpayer must know what is happening with their money. At the moment, the taxpayer has no idea what is happening with their money. So we need more response from government on that level. So government must go away from the top, go back to the grassroots level. So cl government closer to the people so that they know exactly that the ideas that they have and the inputs they give will actually be filtered into the government system and will come back to their communities. At the moment, that does not happen at all. So we believe, go back to local communities. Thank you very much. Mr. Fakir, you've heard what the politicians had to say. I don't think anyone doubts whether um, public participation is, de is, de is desirable or not. But I think the, qu the key question is why is it not happening or why is it not happening to the extent that it should? Well, clearly I think public participation does happen. It just ha doesn't happen in all the regulated procedural dimensions which the legislative and regulatory framework creates. Of course, the idea that uh, citizens take to the streets literally every week in South Africa or the mushrooming protests, people call them service delivery protests, when in fact they may be about protests about a lack of responsiveness, a lack of accountability. Of course there are instances in which they're about interpolitical party fights or fights between candidates or individuals, etc. Uh, problems around the risk process. But fundamentally, they do point to a lack of services firstly, and secondly, a lack of frustration, and, and, and a kind of frustration about the lack of responsiveness by elected of, uh, uh, government uh, uh, officials. But we, I think we also have to be very cautious about what we mean by participation. Is a simple act of information sharing, does that constitute participation? 
does the idea that you have consultation, would that constitute participation? Now, our constitution does create a fairly onerous regime in which participation ought to happen. There's an extensively established uh, infrastructure in terms of ward committees, in terms of IDP processes, uh, but they don't always work, and they don't always work for several different reasons. Firstly, they factionalize and politicize. Secondly, of course, participation comes at a cost. Time, resources, communications, the procedural requirements to enter to participate. But I think there is also the fundamental question that not all citizens want to participate in every single decision that is before them. People simply want to participate in those issues and matters that directly affect them. And what our job, I suppose, as a society is to resource those people to be able to participate when they feel that they have the need to do so. Thank you very much. We are going to explore these issues in full. It's time now for a very short break. Our viewers and listeners at home are most welcome, of course, to take part in this debate by sending us your email or SMS. SMS the word ELECT, followed by your message to 33726, 33726, SMS is cost 1.50 each. Our email address is elections at sabc.co.za. We welcome your Facebook comments as well on the SABC's Facebook page. Stay with us, don't go away. Made with farm fresh ingredients, real coconut, and a touch of baker's magic, nothing's as tempting as tennis. People just don't get it. Sir. The reason I play a little extra is to be a preferred customer. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I call up my guy on a Friday, right? Yeah, Friday. Right. Tell him I need a little something, something extra. <gasps> something, something. You know what he says, Jared? Snap, I'm on it. Snap. By Friday ah. afternoon, he's found me a sweet deal, saving me five percent on all of my premiums. Hey guys, if you insure with Dial Direct, you can actually save yourself up to twenty-five percent on your monthly payments, which is, you know, you can I uh, use a machine? Now. Still using it, huh? No. Trust spinning. Must be pumping. Less yada yada, more ching ching. Save up to 25% on your monthly insurance payments. Dial direct. Simple smart insurance. Zone 100% Pahana calls and SMS are here for life's truth, Bob. Talk more, my baby's a pickup box. Hello, Santa. Join MTN and talk more with the MTN S308 for only 69 grand on MTN pay as you go. And get 100% Mahana calls and SMSs by dialing star 141 star 4 star 2 hash. Available at selected retail stores. MTN. It's the year to be with FNB. Now you can send money instantly to any valid cell phone number and withdraw it at any FNB ATM. E wallet. First from FNB. How can we help you? A picture tells a thousand words. We tell even more. It's mind blowing documentaries every Tuesday at 9. Exclusive to Mzansi's official storyteller, SABC One. Mzansi, for sure. Welcome back, and if you've just tuned in, you're watching a special election debate, and the topic tonight is public participation and councillor accountability. We're coming to you live, of course, from the University of Johannesburg. The SABC is partners in bringing you this debate series in the run-up to the local government elections. You can, of course, also follow this debate on SAFM and on sabcnews.com. Now, before we proceed with this debate, let's just hear what people 
across the country had to say about public participation and council accountability. Honestly, I don't know my ward councillor or wherever he may be, and pretty much at where I live, there isn't much service delivery. And um, as much as we ask to see a difference, we don't get none. No, don't know who they are, never heard of them, haven't seen them. Uh, first of all, I think they need to let people know who they are and what their responsibilities are and how they aim to go about it. Um, so I think they just take the job because maybe it's a way of getting some money and forget about everything else. I mean, nobody seems committed to anything. I see that we've got a lot of posters up representing different parties and uh, recently we had to change our voting station because we moved to presidential areas and uh, yeah, the service we got was, was, was very nice, brilliant, friendliness. What committees are there but uh, we've got a problem, the place is so dirty and there's crime and there's, you know, everything, there's hijacking and all that. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any people walking around. I live in a not a very nice area, and it's always very dirty there. So I always end up phoning the local council people. Well, I do know my ward councillor very well, but he doesn't seem to attend to the uh, community's needs, or he's not willing to stand up for his community. Should I put it that way? Every time they, when they come and they just we see that new new faces all the time. So. No, we don't know them, basically. Well, some interesting comments there from South Africans. Uh, they don't seem to have very good things to say about public participation at local government level. Um, uh, it doesn't seem that things have changed. I remember some years ago, I think it was five or so years ago, at the last election, there was a survey that was conducted, I think, by Asa Nelson, which showed that about 80% of people actually um, didn't have any encounter with their local representatives. Um, are you surprised, Dr. Dr. Ramkhupa? And, and you, you said that the ANC has made a firm commitment that public participa participation is actually foremost. In your, uh, on, your, on your agenda, and yet you still hear South Africans talking the way they do. What do you think lies behind their discontent with levels of public participation? Uh, for your developmental systems uh, are continuous. We don't uh, want a, a, a society that is passive, that only awaits for its leaders to tell them what to do, when to do. So our, even our, uh, in the ANC, our policies is that we are rooted at the grassroots. As that's why we say our branches are the most important. And we've translated that into governance. But indeed, there are, there are, there are ward councillors that uh, have shown that uh, they, they do not abide by our policies and principles. And those councillors have actually undermined the code of conduct that they have signed over and above the legislation that is there. The ANC makes its councillors sign a code of conduct. And in those instances, we have acted decisively, and that is why you see some of the councillors or some of the members of the ANC that have now decided to stand by, their, by themselves. So some of those are councillors who the community said, no, 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 they didn't serve us properly. So we say we are listening to communities, and we are responding to communities, and we will continue promoting participatory democracy and ensuring that uh, South Africans uh, determine uh, together with their leaders that they've elected democratically uh, the future. And also, one thing that I want to say is that participatory democracy is not for the sake of it. It's for improving the lives of people. People <laughs> must see progress. Let me ask a very quick question before I move on to the DA. Why then, if the people that are now standing as independent candidates are people who you felt or the party felt or the people felt uh, and are, are actually responsible for the kind of uh, fleck that the ruling party is taking from the from the electorate that in fact these are people who are not delivering these are people who don't do uh, the sort of things that need to be done by public representatives why then are we seeing people actually marching behind them why, why, why is that uh, 
I've been part and parcel of, uh, of uh, 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 receiving memorandums from people who are marching. I've uh, addressed uh, uh, marches, and I really respect South Africans for standing up for, for marching because that's really the culture we want to continue to see. As long as it is uh, disciplined, it is within the law. But in most cases, in most cases, uh, I've also had matches where people are saying, uh, thank you for the houses, but we don't have playgrounds for children. Thank you for, for roads, but we don't have uh, jobs. Our, ch our children don't have jobs. So public participation must be continuing. But for those councillors that uh, are not uh, serving the public, for those councillors that are not abiding by their code of conduct, uh, trust the ANC to discipline them. Thank you very much. Nisi, you, you have ambitions of becoming the mayor of Johannesburg. What is the DA going to do differently from what the ANC has been doing, which you say has been a dismal failure? Well, I think the first thing that the DA is putting forward is that we have to take government back to the people. And that particular process involves a process of sub-council where we believe we can place in local communities a political head, an administrative head, ensuring that the residents of whatever community they come from can be able to go to a local community, speak to somebody, and be able to deal with their issues right there. Why should uh, bureaucracy be centralized and delegations being brought only to the center while other things could be done at local and regional level. The other issue about public accountability is the fact that I'm standing here as the Joburg mayoral candidate and you are here and I'm availing myself to the public. The African National Congress has not done likewise. And so I'm asking the question, how can people be able to be informed and participate properly if they don't know who their public representatives are? So in other words, you're saying that the failures that we've seen are due to the system that we currently have. So the DA is advocating, is calling for a new system that which you say will decentralize both the political powers but also the administrative powers to like we, the we most basic we should, of We should add more to that. We should put emphasis in sub-councils. Because in sub-councils, what you find is that ward committees can interact at that level. That people, public participation, people can be able to walk into a council that is close by to them, be able to get the right information. Part of the provide of the municipality is that you have to provide minutes of meetings. You have to open mayoral committee meetings. And when that happens, we believe when people are well informed, they can participate better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Van Vey. In the ACGP's view, what lies behind what you saw there, what you heard there, people saying, we are not being consulted, we never really see our local representatives? Okay, if we are in the ACGP's view, there's three things that you need to look at. The one is the fact that the community here is saying, or they is saying, that they don't know. That's the first thing. They don't know their council. And, and, and therefore the ACDP has come up with a view that because that is a problem, we came up with the slogan, let's fix this. There's a problem, it needs to be fixed. And the only way that it can be fixed is by giving, uh, offering the South Africans or the local uh, people councillors that are responsive, councillors that are honest, councillors that care, councillors that will not only work for their own pockets, but will work for the people. Now we must understand one thing, that when a councillor is elected, the councillor, during election time, the councillor goes out to the people. I do understand that the people need to go to the councillor, but there are community newspapers, there are radio stations that councillors can make themselves aware and they can make the community aware, this is who I am, this is my phone number, and what the ACDP would also suggest, if there's a ward committee, that the ward committee need to be, actually need to be uh, introduced to the community. In other words, the ward committee person's name, the ward committee person's portfolio, the ward committee person's telephone number, so that the community knows exactly, because the councillor is the link between the community and council, but the ward committee is the link between the community and the councillor. Thank you very much. Advocate Albert, in the Freedom Front stream, what needs to be fixed? 
And how do we fix it? A lot of things need to be fixed. As I said before, the system is not perfect as it is. We need to deepen democracy. One of the problems with council accountability is that you must look at them as human beings. You can motivate a human being in two ways. You can be nice to them and ask them to do something, or you can enforce some sort of sanction upon them to, to have them do this. At the moment, councillors are only responsible towards their own political party. And if their own political party doesn't want to take action against them, then there's basically nothing you can do. We say we must have a recall system. So you can petition by getting petition signatures from the public in a ward and have it enforced uh, where they get a certain number of, of, of signatures whereby they can recall this councillor in this ward. And there must be a, a by-election then held to put a new councillor in there. Otherwise, you wait five years election cycles. And five-year election cycles are way, way too long to wait for service delivery in this country. Ibrahim? Well, no, Your no. thoughts about what? Look, I think, you know, I think we might be overestimating what we might expect of ordinary citizens. I'm not sure ordinary citizens are always interested in wanting to know and interact with the political process. It is when their interests are affected that they do so. That's the first point to make. The fact that they do so only when their interests are affected is, of course, appropriate and legitimate. What should, of course, happen is that the process requirements need to be made easier. They need to be able to know who their councillors are, and clearly many are pointing out to the fact that they simply can't even identify them. But I think we also shouldn't lose sight of the fact that it's primarily the ward councillors who are largely at fault here, and not perhaps the PR councillors. Because in the split between the 50-50 of 50% 50 of councillors coming from directly elected from a ward, they have the responsibility to actually be responsive, accountable, and facilitative of the kind of concerns that exist in the community. The PR councillors, of course, have that role, no doubt. But of course, their primary role is to facilitate the decision-making and pushing the agendas of their political parties, which is why they're elected on the PR list. I suspect what we might find happening in this election is that citizens are going to start getting wiser, and they might begin to feel I support the view of a particular political party and therefore I might vote for them on the PR list. But the ward candidate, I will choose very carefully the kind of candidate who will actually do the kind of work that's required of a ward candidate, be responsive, uh, be responsive, be accountable, and try and keep things open in the way in which they communicate. Now we can find lots of examples across the country in the way in which the criteria for openness in the way in which decisions are made, information sharing, communication, and the Joe billing crisis is but one, uh, in which there's been massive challenges and weaknesses in the way in which local council have, have actually communicated with the citizens that they're supposed to communicate to. Thank you very much. Now we do, of course, have in the audience the Chief of Operations of the South African Local Government Association, Mr. Lance Joel. He's going to tell us why it is that we're still having the problem we have with regard to public participation. We are going to speak to him after this quick short break. Those of course who are at home, you can participate in this program by sending us your SMSs, by sending us your emails. We will take them after this very quick commercial break. So don't go away, stay with us. It's the year to be with FNB. Get the first account with a zero monthly fee. Just pay when you use your account. It's perfect. Smart Account Zero. First from FNB. How can we help you? Are you prepared for the worst? If you or a family member were to pass away right now, is there enough money for the funeral? At Hollard, we get you and cover you and your partner for up to 50,000 Rand for burial expenses. And to make arranging the funeral easier, we now offer you access to a car. You also have the option of your family receiving up to 1,200 Rand a month for a year after the funeral. Lastly, we offer you up to 10,000 Rand to erect a tombstone as a remembrance. SMS your name or send a please call me to 082-936-7777. That's 082-936-7777. I invited him. What? Yeah, she must have been his partner. 
Yeah. Indabu means invite to anyone. Clara na yepa, and and you were hoping to convince him to ditch New Horizons and join your agency. Gasib zong fire la peg. Oka tuong chumel SMS. Kalungu chui chumel kumuto wrong. Kijua ptilis. Omo mo mo i buto kore. Mewa mo rola na le exian. I haven't always been perfect, but I tried. I tried my best. The best? Really? Generations weekdays at 8, only on SABC1, Mzanzi's official storyteller. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching a live debate coming to you from the University of Johannesburg. And our topic for this evening is public accountability and public participation. Now, Mr. Lance Joel, you are the Chief Ex uh, uh, Operations Officer of the South African Local Government Association. Tell us briefly what, the, what SALGA is for those who still don't know. Thank you very much, uh, Vuyo, and um, uh, good evening to your panelists and, uh, and the audience. Uh, firstly, South African Local Government Association is an association of municipalities. Our core mandate is essentially to advocate and lobby for the best interest of municipalities. In, in, in light of the question that you asked earlier, Vuyo, uh, it confirms uh, our stance as SALGA, in particular around public participation, and more so uh, creates an urgency as we are moving towards the elections. Firstly, what has been confirmed, uh, if, if one listens to the comments that we received from the public earlier, is that there is really a need for us to create some awareness around what exactly does public participation entail and how it is that, is that our communities, individual members within our communities can participate in that particular process. Uh, secondly, it also then requires our councillors that are duly elected to play that role and to drive public participation essentially to also ensure that the legislation that we have put in place, the framework that we have put in place, there is life given to that particular framework in that there is ward committees with the ward councillor chairing those particular ward committees. There is a need for, as uh, the ACDB DP earlier indicated, that there is a need for a continuous engagement between communities and council, and a councillor, a ward councillor in particular, plays a critical role in that regard. So, so if, 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 I may, if I may just chip in there, to a skeptic out there who's asking, but why are we still talking about a need to do this, a need to do that, when in fact, we, in this country, we, have not run, we are not running short of policies. We're not running short of ideas. We know exactly what, I mean, the things that those people were saying, we know them. They've been saying them over and over again. I spoke earlier about a, a survey that was done five years ago, and the things that people are saying there actually confirms the same things that people were saying back then. So why, five years on, so many years on, are we still talking about the news? The key here, uh, Vuyo, is, is it comes to the bottom line. It's awareness. I agree with you, and certainly we are uh, uh, supporters of the current framework that is quite clear on what must be done. But when you bring the human element, uh, Vuyo, when you bring different individuals into that particular framework, you are going to get different results. So it then requires, uh, a two, as I said, a two-pronged approach. One, a council understanding what its role is. And as Salga, uh, post the elections, we are intending to drive a very a comprehensive induction program for councillors to ensure that councillors understand as they come into to the uh, new term of office, they understand exactly what their roles and responsibilities are. And, uh, and uh, following that particular induction program, we will also then have folk uh, portfolio-based training programs. But secondly, Voyo, that's a councillor firstly. Secondly, it is indeed, as you had seen the comments uh, without repeating, there is a need for us as individuals within our community to understand what is our role within this particular framework as well. How do we engage this ward councillor? How do we use this ward committee, which essentially is comprised of ourselves within our ward? How do we use that ward committee to raise our issues, 
to raise our concerns and also ensure that we do not just allow a councillor, once we've given him a mandate, to advance our interest to then not come back and report. Ensure that likewise they come back to ourselves as, as, as community members and report to us it, about the developments within our municipalities. Very, very quickly, I hear you're talking about educating the councillors so that they know what it is exactly um, that, that they have to do. Honestly, we're going to play like a, a quick um, uh, a graphic there which shows you what, um, peop what, what, what are the sort of things that a, a councillor ought to do. And if you look at that, I mean, we're talking here about who lives in the ward. A councillor should know their age groups, who is living in that ward, their employment status, who's employed, who's unemployed. We're talking about residents' problems and needs. That speaks for itself. You know, it's talking about where is the problem, what is the problem, why is it not being resolved, and so on. People's attitudes and opinions towards council plan. Your ITP, I mean, what does it, what does it entail? Do people know about it? Well, are we talking here about um, the environment of the world? How many houses? Where are they? Status of service provision. You know, where is refuse uh, being removed? Where, where are services being rendered? Where are they not being rendered? Uh, what organizations exist? Are there gangsters in this, in, this, in this municipality? And what are we doing about them? Are there other undesirable elements? Like, uh, uh, I mean, organized, organized criminals. Now, these, to me, are fairly simple things that every councillor should know in their locality. Why is it so difficult for councillors not to, why is it seemingly a, a big problem that, that like getting them to understand what, what, what the problems are and what it is to, they have to do about the problems of their communities? Very briefly, 30 seconds. I'm you. Thank, thanks, Vuyo. I, I think we must not generalize. Uh, firstly, I think we must also understand the context. Many of our wards, uh, the minimum number in many wards, you will start at 2,000. We are in the city of Joburg that has in an average 15,000 voters, not population, 15,000 voters. We must not generalize and say that our councillors are not aware of the list that you had just displayed. What we are saying, it is, it, it, we cannot just wait for the councillor to do it. We must assist the ward committee that has been put in place for that particular reason. But more so, we must get up from our seats and, uh, and participate in this democracy that I think uh, all of us are saying have been fought for very hard. Thank you very much. Yeah. A, a, a very quick question I'm going to give you. While I'm allowing, can the political parties who are going to ask questions please approach the microphone? Very quickly, Mr. Joel, give or take, what percentage of councillors across the country know what we're talking about? What we mean by public participation and how to actually do it? Well, uh, I would hate to speculate. I think uh, what is critical, my response would be, is that we know it's a challenge. When we last had the elections in 2006 at the local government level, we had a 60% turnover, which means 60% of, of, of new councillors coming in. We recognize that as a challenge as Salga, and as such, we drove then post-elections the induction. We will likewise do the same thing after the elections and then followed by a specific portfolio-based training. I would not speculate on the, on the, on the numbers. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. That was very useful. Can we start now with that question from... Cole? Thank you. Thank you for your... Uh, I just want to find out uh, the demarcation board. They did their demarcations without involving the communities. I just want to find out why. From who? Specifically? From the ANC. Thank you. Next question. Yes. Um, uh, so please yeah. tell us who you are and where you're from. Okay. Uh, last one. Uh, my who name are you is, and where you're from? Yes, I'm Preddy. I am Preddy from uh, the ruling party in waiting. Uh, that is Kobe. <laughs> yes. Uh, they, 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 they say that uh, they talk about public participation. One, on the issue of uh, what councillors. Select, selection of what councillors from for, to communities. That is the strategy of COPE. That's why now in the ANC they are fighting this way. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. APC? Whenever a government is a budget, do they bring it down Breakdowns because in my area there are houses which is like without a roof and they've been standing there for 12 months now. Now, knowing that we are going for elections, um, it seems 
somebody is coming with um, maybe two corrugated irons to roof. Is it true that the Naban Pazo Keller is investing in a roof now? Is that the budget, the correct budget? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, we seem to. Okay, can we just hold on? Just hold your thought right there. Can we have. Uh, we would like to respond to the question to, that was posed uh, to the ANC. For you, I just want to confirm that uh, any ANC councillor, before they take office, they go through an orientation in terms of what they are required to do. The only thing I would want to appreciate that uh, in, as, in as far as the ward councillor system that we have now, uh, the council collective, uh, the council collective receives issues that come from each ward and applies its mind and decide on what is the best for the collective in that area. The issue of, the issue of, uh, I think there's a need to strengthen the responsiveness, including what other municipalities uh, in in Gauteng have done ward-based budgeting. There's a need to do that to strengthen the hand of the ward councillor as such. So, yes, the system is there. You are saying that we're not short of laws and policies. Uh, ANC councillors are not sent out there without being uh, orientated, without also signing a contract. And, and for us, it is for us as South Africans to look at what system can we still improve and those that do not observe the policies and the legislative frameworks, if they belong to a... To a that's why we're saying we, we don't be, believe what uh, the Freedom Front says, that uh, uh, the, the, uh, you can't trust political parties. I think political parties must take responsibility over those that uh, they send and to discipline them and to respond to the concerns of the public. Thank you. Thank you very much. And very quickly to the question about open uh, houses that are going, you're going to build houses with no roofs, very quickly. Yes, as, as I've indicated, uh, 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 in most cases, it is during the process of delivery that people also identify problems. I, we acknowledge that we haven't been everywhere because of budget constraints and all that, but there is progress that has been made. But progress. there is no way, we also believe in the quality of services, and uh, where there are no quality of services delivered, we want the community to stand up and bring that to our attention so that we can work with them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Question from the PAC. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mbulela Myamane, and uh, I'm the regional representative of the PAC of Azania. Uh, as PAC, we strongly believe that uh, the current government lacks the will not necessarily the policies. But then as PAC, we would like to know, in a population that is over 50 million in Azania, how do they intend to address an issue of service delivery, whereas that, whereas that there is a, a deficit, the, the country of over 50 million that is subsidized by only a less than 2% of the population who are contributing to the economy. Thank and we you. believe that Thank they can much. never talk about service delivery if do not, they are not addressing the fundamental question, which is the land question, where 13% 13, 13 of the population of over 70 million are congested in, Thank and 87% only own Thank you. the majority Thank you. of I our land. I think we've land. got the gist of a question. Would like to respond to I think it's, uh, if I hear the question well, it is about... Um, the high unemployment levels that we, we need to improve uh, employment levels so that more and more of us contribute to the common kitty uh, of the country. Uh, I think if you, 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 you look at uh, some of the statistics, uh, we have invested even in local economic development, not only at a macro level. And in this instance, we know that Gauteng, for instance, is an economic engine of the country. About 35% of the country's economy is here. But we also know that we have also focused on rural development. That's why at the national level, 
we have said that all com in all communities there must be economic development so that the revenue base is able to carry the programs of development of communities. And maybe this links to the issue of sub-councils. Sub-councils are catered for in the regulations that are there now. The only reason why in other instances you don't, don't go sub-council uh, route is because you want to pull the, the, the revenue base. If Johannesburg didn't pull the revenue base, you wouldn't see the progress uh, that we have seen in development in Soweto. Soweto would not have been all all, all, all I, I, I time. See the, I see the case. I'm going to take a question from the uh, Soweto concerned residents uh, very briefly. My name is Eunice Zungu from Soweto concerned resident. Uh, I want to my question is facing to the ANC member there. One, I want to know that why the ruling party, the ANC, privatize our water, privatize our electricity. Buying water and electricity. Thank you very much. Is, is, is it, is it a, a, a better for all? Question. Thank you. Yeah. For your, uh, this, these are just institutions of government uh, that uh, the, the, the city has looked at, and it happens anywhere. Just like, for instance, Transnet is an agency, but it is wholly owned by government. But I think that the people of, of Soweto and of, of Johannesburg can also petition, can also uh, come up with alternatives of efficiency. My understanding is that Johannesburg consulted fully and that was the outcome of a consultative process with community and stakeholders in Johannesburg. So I, but that can be reviewed. In other words, you're saying those who do not accept what is there now are in fact going against the will of the majority because the majority decided. Uh, well, I think in any process of decision making, you consult, you balance all the options, you look at the needs of uh, the population. There are people who are very rich in Johannesburg, for instance. They wouldn't even be bothered what happens, uh, for instance, in, uh, in, in, in the Alex. So it's important to take the developmental needs of, uh, of a community and of a society. Thank you Thank very you. much. Well so our viewers at home, please keep sending us your comments by SMS or email. SMS the word elect, followed by your message to 33726. SMSs cost 150 each. Our email address hasn't changed, elections at sabc.co.za. We're continuing with this debate after this quick commercial break. Are you prepared for the worst? If you or a family member were to pass away right now, is there enough money for the funeral? At Hollard, we get you and cover you and your partner for up to 50,000 Rand for burial expenses. And to make arranging the funeral easier, we now offer you access to a car. You also have the option of your family receiving up to 1,200 Rand a month for a year after the funeral. Lastly, we offer you up to 10,000 Rand to erect a tombstone as a remembrance. SMS your name or send a please call me to 082-936-7777. That's 082-936-7777. It's the year to be with FNB because only FNB offers you an account with 11,000 Rand worth of funeral cover free. Smart Account Unlimited, only from FNB. How can we help you? SABC. 
boy genius Michael Dean teams up with a super talented chimpanzee to take down a testing lab in Funky Monkey at 10 on 1. Don't miss the cases of the Naval Criminal Investigative Service on NCIS at 10 on 2. And a professional assassin is sent on a mission to a small suburb only to find it's his high school reunion party in Gross Point Blank at 10 on 3. Funky Monkey, NCIS and Gross Point Blank. It's stimulating viewing only on SABC. It's the year to be with FNB. You can get the home you've always wanted with a guaranteed 100% bond. Best of all, no deposit is required. Smart Bond, only from FNB. How can we help you? Welcome back. You're watching and listening to a special election debate on public participation and council accountability. We're coming to you live from the University of Johannesburg, and you can also follow this debate on SAFM and on sabcnews.com. Uh, I know some of you are not happy not having had an opportunity to ask questions, but unfortunately we have to give other political parties that are not on the panel an opportunity to participate in this debate. So I take it you will all accept that in the good spirit that it's being done. Well, just to read a few emails and, 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 and SMSs that have, uh, and Facebook comments that have been sent through. One says, people are just ignorant when meetings are called, they don't pitch, but most parties are trying by all means to inform and to involve the public in participation and in decision making. Very good one. Um, somebody else says, well, most of these candidates do not have the love for the public. You only see them when there are strikes and only when they go with empty promises. Accountability is highly impossible in the government sector. Another one um, says, this is Sakun Zindlova from Orlando West, public participation does exist, but communities are not forthcoming. Therefore, it's a challenge to all parties to help communities to understand the importance of their participation. I don't think we could have ended um, um, this part of, of, of uh, um, of this uh, of inputs without a bet with uh, with a better comment than this um, I'm going to ask political parties to make very brief um, um, closing comments let me start with the with the ANC where do we go from here I know that um, we do have a a, a, a ward committee system yes. which um, tries to deal with some of these issues you listen to Salga talking about some of the problems that you find there but where do we go from here? This election is going to come and go. But what happens to public participation and public accountability by our councillors, but by our own local representatives that we would have elected? Uh, Voyo, in our manifesto uh, for 2011, we clearly say that uh, we will, together working with the community, build sustainable uh, communities where we, 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 we live. So the important thing is that as we build sustainable communities, as, as we build sustainable communities, we want to build on the progress we've made together with communities, on the lessons and the gaps that we have identified together through participatory processes. And uh, we have no doubt whatsoever that uh, we, there is room to improve in a number of uh, areas where councillors were not accountable. And uh, we, are, we have strengthened our accountability measures. If you realize this year, we have also invited the public to tell us how our own councillors and how our own uh, public representatives are acceptable or not. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Democratic Alliance. I think we were one of the key issues is the fact that the issue of accountability is important. We have to open municipal councils to be open to the public in every aspect, in mayoral committees and everything. We believe in the attraction of skills. We believe that when you get the right people doing the right things, you can get the right results. And at the moment, if you practice cronyism, people cannot participate in that environment because it's a close for a few. The other key issue is that we want councillors who want to work for the broader community. They can't be involved just for a few. In communities such as Alexander, etc., etc., houses are being allocated on the basis of who they are connected with, not the mandate of the city. And more than anything, we have to deal with the issue of corruption, we have to make sure that that is open, and we have to ensure that this city is available for economic development by making it transparent and safe for all. That is what we are, we are calling for. Thank you very much. ACGP, Dr. Hulvet. We are 
Honourable, before I answer that one, allow me just to say this. Public participation for the ACDP is very important. Therefore, when people um, go to the community, number one, they will learn th what their conditions are. You've, you've given a list. The other one, they will learn um, that change would come according to the pace of the community. And, and thirdly, they will get the community involved. Again, as I say, not rubber stamp. But the ACDP's view is the following, that what committee system can work if you do these three things. The one is your ward committee with your ward councillor need to be at the specific office at fixed days and fixed times. They need to be, uh, the na names and numbers need to be given to the community. And the third one that I want to say that the ACDP want to bring local, com help local communities make lo have local solutions to local problems. And that is why we say let's fix this mess that has been created. Put in front, class, advocate. The fact that so many people are happy shows that the system is deeply flawed and the system needs change. We need to deepen democracy by creating smaller councils, smaller wards, and bring the government down to the grassroots level. We believe that there must be transparency. The taxpayer knows what happens with their money and where there are poor areas. Don't just redistribute the money of the taxpayer to the poorer areas, but help to create an environment to create jobs in a poor area. So Soweto must get jobs. South Hills and Johannesburg must get jobs. And that is, that is what the, the ANC must concentrate on and not just redistribute wealth because the taxpayer cannot afford it anymore. They introduce more and more taxes like the tolling system in Gauteng. The ANC says, they, they say yay for the uh, tax system, but then they come back and say they don't know anything about the tax. Um, and this shows you that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing in the ANC, and that's the way they govern and say we, it must stop. And if there's no services delivered, no taxes must be paid in the end of the day. Thank you very much. Ibrahim Fakir, well, well, clearly it appears as if there's a need for a back-to-basics approach. And this back-to-basics approach obviously needs a requirement that councillors have to understand that they're there to provide a service to a community. They're there to facilitate service delivery, promote constituency relations, do door-to-door -door work, and have open communications. That's the first set of things. The second is I think we must recognize that different parts of the society are going to participate in different ways. Because the middle classes have better ways of organizing, they pressure and demand accountability through organization, through professional associations, property associations, residence associations, and so forth. The poor do so by taking to the streets. Both are, of course, vital for democracy and necessary for democracy. The third, I think, which is an important point to recognize, is that participation in this local government elections is going to matter. And it's going to matter because from 2000 and 2006, our turnout levels at local uh, uh, elections have been 48%, which compares back badly with turnout at national and provincial elections which are close to 78 and 80 percent, though internationally uh, on local government elections we perform much better. But of course for many parties, if they can't get their voters to turn out, in marginal communities they may in fact start losing councils. The third is, the fourth is that on the question of governance decisions made, uh, made on the basis of people's participation. Now you've had two, where, on the question of the demarcation board, two decisions which have been reversed. The one in Kutsong where there was massive protest in 2006, but come and, and turnout at that stage in 2006 was very low at that particular polling station. It was close to 4 per 10. Come to 2009, of course, turnout was very high, close to 80 percent, and they solidly voted ANC. And I think what, what is a matter for other opposition parties is the ability to actually capture political power and then demonstrate the governance effects that they can engage in. And the last point I would make is that obviously many people believe that the ANC ought to be confident in power, to be able to use the instruments of cross-subsidization to be able to uh, effect delivery to the poor, because they control out of 280 municipalities close to 270 and, and have 65 percent of the mandate from the population. So clearly, a party of that sort ought not to be unconfident in power, but obviously the kind of personality, ideological, and factional politics within the ANC affects the way in which it can perform in government. Mr. Ibrahim Fakir, thank you very much. Well, to our panel, I want to thank each and every one of you, but I'm afraid that's where we're going to have to leave it for this evening. Well, that concludes tonight's debate show. Join us next Sunday on SABC1, SAFM, and SABCnews.com for the next debate in the series which is brought to you by the SABC in association with the University of Johannesburg. Next week, we'll debate the role of the youth in local government. It's going to be very exciting, and we will be here. You can get next week's debate going with your questions and comments on SABC News' Facebook page. And don't forget your...
special pre-election show, which is broadcast from Mondays to Thursdays from 6 o'clock to 6.30 on SABC2. From me, Boyan Boko, and the rest of the crew, have a good night.